In fact, if we are thinking of social transformation or social revolution, though it would be absurd, of course, to try to draw out in detail the point that we're hoping to reach, still we should know something about where we think we're going. A consistent anarchist must oppose private ownership of the means of production. Such property is indeed, as Dugan, his famous remark, asserted a form of theft. But a consistent anarchist will also oppose the organization of production by government. The goal of the working class is liberation from exploitation, and this goal is not reached and cannot be reached by a new directing and governing class. Property is indeed a form of theft. The revolutionary socialist denies that state ownership can end in anything other than bureaucratic despotism. We have seen why the state cannot democratically control industry. Industry can only be democratically owned and controlled by the workers electing directly from their own ranks, industrial administrative committees. The political state throughout history has meant the government of men by ruling classes. The Republic of Socialism will be the government of industry administered on behalf of the whole community. These ideas have been realized in spontaneous revolutionary action several times. For example, in Germany and Italy after the First World War in Catalonia in 1936. May 1968 in France, of course, accelerated the growing interest in council communism and similar ideas, other forms of libertarian socialism in France and Germany as it did in England. Property is indeed a form of theft. Democracy is largely a sham when the industrial system is controlled by any form of autocratic elite, whether of owners, managers, technocrats, vanguard party, estate bureaucracy, or whatever. The anarchists were convinced that capitalism and the state must be destroyed together. Capitalism, capitalism and the state must be destroyed together. Well, the commune was, of course, drowned in blood, as the anarchist communes of Spain were destroyed by fascist and communist armies. And it might be argued that more dictatorial structures would have defended the revolution against such forces. But I doubt this very much. At least in the case of Spain, it seems to me that a more consistent libertarian policy might have provided the only possible defense of the revolution. The libertarian socialist goes on to insist that the state power must be eliminated in favor of the democratic organization of industrial society, with direct popular control over all institutions by those who participate in, as well as those who are directly affected by the workings of these institutions. So one might imagine then a system of workers' councils, consumers' councils, commune assemblies, regional federations, and so on. Property is indeed a form of theft. Property is indeed a form of theft.